Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah, thanks for watching. Welcome back. If you are a returning viewer, if you are new here, thank you so much for watching. My name is Hannah. I am a knitter, um, knitwear designer for children and a mom, and I live in North Carolina with my son and my husband. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear their blowing leaves today um, right outside our house, <laughs> uh, which is awesome, but not awesome for the sound quality. So hopefully you can't hear that too much. Um, well, Today is a special video. If you have been following along, I reached 1,000 subscribers. Thank you guys for helping me um, get there. And um, so I wanted to do a special video to say thank you and also to for you to get to know me a little bit um, because I'm going to share my yarn stash, which as you know, if you are not a sort of fiber person, um, and you're still watching, thank you. <laughs> um, but also it's kind of personal how much you have, what you have, it shows a lot about you, what colors you like, but also um, yarn can be expensive. Some people feel embarrassed about their stash, all of that. So we're not here for, for that. But um, yeah, so I'm going to be sharing my stash yarn with you. I asked for how to organize this video and you guys gave me the best comments and suggestions. So I will definitely be touching on most of those suggestions. If I have a project, um, what weight the yarn is, um, how I store my yarn, that kind of thing. So I'm definitely going to touch on all of that. Um, but the video will still be like unscripted um, because people were wanting to see my reactions to my own stash. <laughs> um, all my videos are unscripted. I don't really plan them ahead of time. I just pull all my projects out um, because it just feels more genuine and I want to be genuine with you guys and it can feel hard to come across that way on social media. So anyway, it will definitely be unscripted. I didn't go through any of this beforehand. I don't know who has time for that, but good if you do. <laughs> It will be a true test of my stash knowledge. If I remember what the yarn's called, where I got it, all of that. Um, but it'll be fun. I, yeah, I'm really excited. I keep all of my yarn in a closet in my basement. And so I had to bring it all upstairs so that I could see what, <laughs> you could see it in the natural light. But also now I can see there is a lot. And I have not ever thought of doing a de-stash um, just because I, like plan to use a lot of it but now looking at it I'm like oh yeah there are some that you know might have a better home somewhere else so so I don't know we'll see at the very end of the video I'm gonna do sort of like a vlog style um, where I will bring it all back down and sort of organize it a little bit and show you how I keep it um, just in the basement closet <laughs> okay two last things before I start sharing all of my yarn which I know is what you came for the first thing is that I want to acknowledge that stash can often have a negative connotation or it can be triggering for people who have addictions. And so um, if that's you, then just please skip my video and watch, you know, watch another one. I don't want that to happen um, for you. In the knitting world, it's almost 100% agreed upon that stash is the term that you use for the yarn that you've bought, but you haven't knit yet. Um, and so I don't know another term of what to call it. If you have one, let me know. My yarn collection, my yarn to be knit later, years from now, I'm not sure. But the second thing is that I read a really impactful book that helped me um, sort of understand my relationship to my stash and why it can often be emotional for me. Um, it's called, I wrote this down, A Stash of One's Own. It's by Clara, Clara Parks. It's a collection of essays written by fiber artists, some who are pretty fiber world famous, um, about their relationship with yarn, um, how it impacts their personal lives, their family life, their emotional connection to it, if it's been passed down from family members, that kind of thing, whether they want to buy some, they don't buy any, that kind of thing. So whether they have a limit, they don't have a limit, they don't have a stash, it was really helpful to me. It was very cool um, to read other people's opinions on it and not only their opinions, but also their personal experiences. So if you're looking to add something to your collection, but not yarn, I do recommend that book. Okay, now I'm gonna start with my stash. 
I think I'm just gonna start picking up bags and going through it. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm gonna share a picture of it on the floor right now in my kitchen. Okay, so now you've seen how much yarn I brought up from downstairs. I'm gonna start with actual like hanks with yarn labels on them, and then I'll get down into like the, you know, nitty gritty little scraps, that kind of thing. I don't think I'm gonna be able to share all of it. <laughs> Okay, so sorry about all the crinkling. I do have it in bags, so I'm gonna move my microphone. Maybe that will help. Um, but this is what I store my yarn in for the most part. They're from Amazon, and I think I just put in like garment storage bag, and I put cedar balls and lavender sachets in there. So this is a specifically Pearl Soho yarn bag. I have a couple of these, and this is my Pearl Soho yarn. I'm a big fan because it is often affordable for me. They have huge sales. I think they have one right now. Um, but yeah, so this is some yarn from my stash. You might recognize it from a design. This is Worsted Twist. I'm gonna make my husband another hat. And if there's enough, one for me. I have Pearl Soho Goodwool. I actually have another bag that's just Goodwool. Um, so I think I'm gonna leave this out and put it in there to consolidate. This is um, olive oil. I You'll definitely recognize these like from some of my projects. Goodwill is basically a yarn where if it's on sale, I'm gonna add some more to my stash because I reach for it for sweaters um, and I have a lot of like random amounts. And so I'm like, oh, I need to add a skein. And then like I have a little bit left. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna keep adding. It's just like an endless cycle of buying more. So I have, like this much. So I'm like, oh, do I need to add another one so I can get a sweaters quantity? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> um, more Pearl Soho. This is Pearl Soho Burnish. It's rayon, um, bamboo rayon. It feels so nice. So I have three of these and I think it's more, it's a fingering weight and I think it's definitely like a summer sweater. I would like to knit something for the summer in this. It would be so comfy. So I have that. Yeah, I already swatched it and everything. I think I swatched for Cumulus Tea. The drape is just like perfect. Um, okay, then I have this Pearl Soho Buttercup Cotton. Um, I promise this is not like a Pearl Soho ad. I just started with that bag. <laughs> um, so it's cotton and the color is Lavender Fog. I don't know what I'm gonna make with this. It was just on sale and there's 365 yards. So together I could definitely make a summer tea or like a blanket. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, this is a good one. More, this is more summery yarn, I guess. This is Pearl Soho Linen Quill. Eh, purple smoke. I have three of these. And I don't know, I was thinking another like transitional seasonal sweater, maybe coloring book tea or another cumulus tea. I'm not sure um, what I'll do, but I just love this purple color. So this is a lot of purples. <laughs> um, yeah, that is my first Pearl Soho bag. So my second Pearl Soho bag is mostly scraps. Um, yeah, I said I was gonna just do the ones that weren't wound and here we are. So already going off, off script. <laughs> Um, this is another Pearl Soho bag. I have some Goodwill. I use this to design um, Ollie's Classic Crew, which um, is a children's pattern of mine. And I can't remember the color name. This is more, this is Heirloom White. I have two sweaters out of this. And then I also have this left. So I'm like, do I add more so I can make another sweater? I don't know. <laughs> um, this is more Goodwill. It's pink, Pink Dawn, I think. I use this for my Kerti sweater. And I use some of this for that sweater. That's what the green was from. And then I have this color, which I believe is Walking Stick. I actually have a good amount of this, maybe 600 yards. And so I'm thinking about getting a Surrey or Mohair to hold it with. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do with that, but I'd like to have maybe a vest 
um, or another crop sweater. I'm wearing my tilled sweater right now. I don't know if you can see. Um, so that is a low yardage um, sweater for my size. And so I think I could make it work. I don't know. I just really like this color lately. Um, let's see. My last Goodwill. I think this is Reed Gray. I just have this one. So I'm kind of thinking I need another color work sweater. If you have any ideas for that, let me know. I would love to hear your ideas for my yarn. Um, if you have something similar or the same weight, this is a sport weight. Um, yeah, let me know what you think I should make. Okay, I just have a little bit left. Oh, I don't remember the name of this cotton, but I made my son um, a blanket out of it before he was born. This is making me emotional. <laughs> Um, so I made him a blanket out of it before he was born and it was special to work on it um, and just think about him and what our life would be like together. He recently um, brought it into his crib with him and so now it's in there and he sleeps with it and it's just very sweet and I don't know. I have been saving these because it feels extra special because he has a blanket out of it and so I don't know what I'm going to make with these. I really don't know what to do with cotton yarn honestly. So maybe I'll just make another blanket for him or a satchel. I could make another satchel. That would be cute. So anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do with these, but I just keep them around because you never know when you might need some fingering weight cotton yarn. <laughs> okay, next up on deck, I have some like deep winter yarns. So we'll see. I have some peace fleece in the color Morning Dove. And I have two, this one's already caked up. I also have gray. And what is it? Oh, this is Negotiation Gray. I have two and a half of these. So I feel like I could do either like a vest for myself or I could do a color work sweater. Um, I initially got these to make, I made a snood for my husband from the Moon and Turtle book, and this was the recommended yarn. So I wanted to make myself one and eventually make Ollie one. But um, my husband wears his some, it's actually right here. Um, he wears his like when it's really cold, but I think that the fiber content is just a little too um, rustic as they say for him. It's ramule and mohair. And so I think maybe he would be more comfortable in something else. So I don't think I'm gonna make myself a matching one if he doesn't wear his super often, so might as well just make myself a sweater, right? <laughs> um, anyway, it's kind of a joke, kind of not really a joke. Um, then I have some Fiber Co. Lore. These are both worsted weight, so Peace Fleece and Lore, I believe. Although Lore looks a little thinner. I have three different colors. Um, I originally bought these for a color blocked sweater um, I believe two years ago, a yarn shop that is local to um, our area sends me like a, you know, birthday, happy birthday kind of thing. And so this was on sale and then I got my sale discount for my birthday. And so I was like, yes, I'm going to get it. But I didn't really buy like an appropriate amount. I should have just bought all one color or bought enough to make a sweater. But I was trying to be like as inexpensive as possible. So I think I got, I also did want to make like a color block sweater. So this is what I have. And it's 273 yards. So definitely like, right, almost it's like over a thousand yards. So I have enough for a sweater. I just have to decide how to organize it. Like, do I want to do color work or just like color block stripes, which I kind of think I'm leaning towards that. Um, but anyway, we're still wait. And yeah, it feels really nice. I don't know. I don't really wear any sweaters next to skin, even like ready to wear ones because I get so cold in the winter if I'm wearing a sweater I probably need to be also wearing a shirt and a jacket and all that so I don't know oh this is a lot of yarn here's some that's just sitting right here <laughs> um this I actually have one more too um wow this is the same color as the lore that I got it's like pink yellow and white I got that this year. Uh, I got this this year. This is Lanyard Bulky, 100% um, cotton. And I got it from the 
Echo View Fiber Mill closing sale. So sadly, they're no longer um, in business, but I'm planning to make some um, placemats for the table. I think that would be super cute. And then if I have extra, maybe a table runner for our coffee table. Um, yeah, I painted our fireplace and we have an accent wall in our main floor and they're sort of this color. So that's my intention is to make something um, like home decor. Now I have my bag of Scout. This is just a random bag, not one of those fancy zipper ones. <laughs> so Scout is another one of those yarns where if I see it on sale or um, if I just see it somewhere, I'm like, oh, I'll get another skein because I use it for a lot of gifts and um, for just like everyday wear projects. So I have one, two, two and a half maybe of this um, charcoal heather, I believe is what it's called. Yep, charcoal heather. And I just kind of collect it. I made my husband a hat out of this, which he really loves. He might be due for another one. It's been a couple of years and he wears it constantly. Um, so Scout is, what does it say? 20, 22 stitches. So maybe like a DK. And um, I would say it's not super wash, but it does feel very nice. Um, it doesn't bother my husband at all. So I like that. I have a white one. And then I also have this one. And I have another half of this. So I don't think I really like these together as much for color work. So I probably keep them separate. But I just keep them on hand because I like, like them. And if I need to be like, oh, a gift. I need to whip it up. Got some yarn. <laughs> So I've used them for previous projects. I'm trying to think what I used. Well, this one, I just finished my uh, September jacket in this color. So that's why I have a half one of these left is, um, I had a half is because I just finished it up. So yes, I'm trying to think what else. I've made a hat out of this. Um, I made my husband a slip over out of this color. So I like it a lot for gift knitting. I find DK is a good weight for that, but if I am impatient one day, maybe I will just hold it with something and make myself something really bulky. I don't know. Okay, you might have seen this if you watched some of my previous videos. I shared it in an acquisitions because I got it recently, um, but I'm not gonna pull it all out. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, yeah. So I have in here a sweater's quantity worth of Drops Lima. This is my first time using um, Drops Lima. I haven't used it yet, but it feels really nice. And I'm planning to make a September, no, 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 no. I'm planning to make a November jacket out of this. I don't know if it'll happen this year. I really wanted to make it, but I signed up myself up for too many um, like gift knits, and, which is fine. I'm not upset about it, but I just probably won't have time to make it this year and that's fine. It'll last until next year, it'll still be here. Hopefully the moths don't get as I say that. Um, but anyway, I have enough for that. And I also have this alpaca boucle and I really want to make myself a slip over out of this. I also have another color, this color. Ooh, got messy. <laughs> um, I might do this darker color. So I would like it with like creams and black. So Yes, I think I'm gonna make a slip over out of this. I originally got it for a design I'm working on right now that's in testing, but then I found an indie dyer that dyed with clay yarn and I wanted to use hers instead to kind of support small and get to know her better. So I think I'm gonna just use it to make a slip over for myself. November jacket, I'm coming <laughs> one day. It's another like brioche, giant brioche project. So totally okay that I can't finish it. But Okay, and now I have, like this is my Knitting for Olive um, scrap, so another one organized by brand. I think that's kind of nice um, because I don't know about you, but I feel like I sort of keep this catalog of yarns in my head, um, mainly because most of my focus is either on parenting or yarn. So that's like a lot of it right now. Um, yes, back to the catalog of yarn in my head. So. I feel like I'm familiar with a lot of yarn companies, yarn bases, um, at least in the US. And so it's helpful to think like, okay, I have some knitting for all of what's that bag look like? And I can think about in my head, 
what what was in the bag the last time I opened it and I'm like okay I have two two artichoke green dusty artichoke so anyway that's kind of why I do a lot of like organized by brand then after brand I break it down into like wait if I just have single skeins skeins so I have two of these um, merino and then I have one of this like dusty rose no rose clay I have one wild berries one dusty olive and one caramel I believe so definitely have like a color theme oh gosh that's so pretty <laughs> I want to make something out of this I don't know a fingering weight color work sweater is not that appealing to me though so I don't know I made a cumulus tea out of this absolutely love it but now I have these so I think this would be good for tank tops I used some knitting for olive um, merino to make a camisole that I can't remember but it's probably my most worn summer knit besides my cumulus tee and both of them were knit in this so I really like it even though it's wool um, it's nice for like going out to a restaurant because it is so cold in restaurants when it's hot outside yes anyway so I really love knitting for Olive. If you hadn't noticed, I wish I had more. <laughs> um, also great for gifts because it just feels like you're gifting someone something that's like luxurious, something that's luxurious and um, also cool because it's like I'm in the US so it's cool to be like, your yarn came from here. And I don't know, I like that. So I have some more knitting for Olive that I'll share. This is a lot of Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. Um, the color's Marzipan. So I originally bought this to make my husband a, another vest or slipover for this season. But after his sort of um, like desire for like softer yarns, I don't know that the Heavy Merino would be right for him unless maybe I hold it with something, but honestly, I'm thinking he might be allergic to mohair, and so I'm just like, maybe not. I'll find something else <laughs> to knit for you or some other yarn to buy you, so I don't know. I have like a pretty good amount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven of these, and so that's definitely a sweater's worth um, for me. But also, if I held it with something, I could do a sweater and a slipover. If I just decide to get him something else, I'd use it for me. I'm not sure. If you're watching, Phil, I love you. I promise I will make you something. Um, he doesn't actually really want me to make him anything. I just feel like I should. I, that's undecided, but there's time. There's time. Okay, so this is my last knitting for all of I shared this earlier um, in some of my videos. Uh, my fall knitting plans video. I have this which is a bag of Lang Surrey and also um, Knitting for Olive Merino. And the Marine, the Knitting for Olive is Plum Rose and the Surrey is um, unknown. <laughs> but I wanted to knit a sweater off this this year, but then I realized that this Surrey is just not good for cables and textured. So I think I'm just gonna do a stockinette, but this would probably be like a bulky weight or maybe Erin. So if you have an Erin weight pattern that you like, let me know. I think I wanna do drop shoulder, but that's not my favorite fit, like a drop shoulder cardigan, but I'm just not sure. But I just love it so much that I don't want to use it and mess it up. Um, but yeah, I don't know. My husband and I got this. Well, I got this when my husband and I and our son, we went to Charlottesville. Um, as a family and we visited U Fibers, so that was really fun. Um, and then my husband got me this pink for Mother's Day from our local yarn shop. So this one's definitely gonna be a memory sweater, which is kind of why I am holding on to it, I think, um, because it does have that special memory of like our first trip as a family of three and Ollie had a blast. And then also Mother's Day is special. So yeah, I'm kind of holding on to this one. This is my sock yarn. No, this is fingering weight yarn, I believe. Um, yeah, let me see. Oh, I see. Okay, this is Woolberry. 
So this is from the Woolberry Retreat, which I went with, well, it was virtual, but I attended with my sister. And so it's this beautiful sock set. There's like 600 yards in here, but I just don't think I'm gonna make socks out of it. Um, I don't know. It just feels so pretty that I want it to be like displayed. Like maybe this would be a cute slipover um, or a hat. Ooh, maybe a hat. I don't know. Okay, maybe I'll do a hat. I'm not sure yet. Um, yes, yeah, so this is also Woolberry. This is Surrey. Um, I think it's maybe October or something. So I knit, knit this into a pair of socks for my mom. Um, oh yeah, I used this. Um, the rest of this, this is also Woolberry, very cashmere. So I made her a pair of the Hibernation House socks um, and they were so cozy. <laughs> so I think this is like my super fancy for me um, yarn box. Um, yeah, this is more Woolberry. I think I'm gonna make either a scarf or a cardigan for my son out of this. This is the Tattered Pages and it's Surrey and um, the merino, fingering weight merino. And I also have some for myself. This is Tattered Pages. Um, I don't think it's enough for a sweater. I'm not sure what I was thinking. I just got to probably thinking like, uh, I need to like not spend that much money, but also what is two gonna give me? Half a sweater. <laughs> No, but it might be enough for like a cropped sweater. So cropped fingering weight sweater would be nice. And I love the tweed in here. Just so pretty. Um, it feels very academic. Like I should be going to like get my master's or something in this sweater. <laughs> um, okay, let's see. Okay, I have Ottoman Indigo. This is their local fingering. And I think it's Urchin is the purple color. And then I have two local fingering in this. And there's almost uh, 450 yards. So this will be enough for me, I think, for a sweater um, cropped. But still, <laughs> probably enough for a fingering weight sweater. So I don't know what sweater pattern um, I will make with this. I, I think I need a lot of sweater recommendations. <laughs> this one is fingering weight. Um, and I could use this as like a two color um, color work, but I think I'm actually gonna use this for gloves um, or a hat because my hands have been so cold lately. Um, and I have a tiny bit of um, mohair left, which reminds me, where is that mohair? Because it's knitting for Olive and I should have seen it already. But anyway, it's this color, maybe I'll find it next. Um, but yeah, so this is my first time trying Autumn and Indigo. They had a big warehouse sale and um, it feels so good. So this will be so nice in a sweater. Just have to make it. <laughs> Ooh, I kind of want to leave it out. There's so many things I want to make. So little time. Ooh, this is nice together. Oh my gosh, wow. Okay, so maybe I will put this on here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but lots of ideas coming from this. My last skein in here is another Lapidary by um, Echo View Fiber Mill. Again, they closed, sad, they were in North Carolina. I actually went and visited them. Um, I talked about it in my first episode ever, and it's just a special place. I went there on my birthday with my mom and sister, and it was gorgeous, gold lead certified um just beautiful so sad but there's still lots of yarn out there that you can get my sister recently went somewhere in charlotte um and she went to a yarn shop and they had a bunch of echo view yarn so it's still out there in the u.s if you can find it <laughs> i would buy it if i were you it's just so beautiful i made some socks out of the lapidary and i love my son's gonna come down from his nap and be like, mom, what happened? <laughs> if he could say that. Okay, so now I have some more sock yarns. These are sort of like scrappy. This I got from the EcoView, EcoView, um, like sale, where they had a warehouse closing sale, all of that. It's the same as the pink I just showed, the lapidary but I don't know how much it is. So it looks like a ton. 
Oh, uh, maybe um, two of the previous gain. So I need to just weigh it and see. That will be really easy, but um, I just haven't yet. So we'll see how much it is. I was thinking about making a um, summer tank out of this. I believe it's a tinsel uh, blend. And so it's just very light and also warm. This is not my usual color, <laughs> but I thought it would be beautiful um, or just gift socks because they were so soft when I made them. <laughs> um, okay, so this is, the tag is right here. I believe this is alpaca, yes, this is Rico Superba Alpaca Sock. And my um, sister-in-law and her husband live in Brussels. And so they got this for me for Christmas last year. And I was actually thinking instead of socks, I was thinking about making Ollie a vest out of it because I love this blue. And it's so warm. He's very into refusing like jackets or anything with extra sleeves on them. So a vest might be nice. I want to leave it out so I remember. <laughs> but also no room up here. <laughs> but I just, I really like it. I just have one, um, but it'll be enough yardage for a vest for him. This is some yarn from Knit Picks that I dyed. Um, I knit and um, all these bear lovey, which is one of my patterns out of this, um, but I don't know what it's called. I dyed it with avocado pits. So cool, if you're thinking about doing that, um, it's like a great jumping off spot for natural dyeing. And um, yeah, I really love the pink that came out. So I'm thinking about, I'm just gonna like sort of show you guys these and they kind of coordinate a little bit um i made my sister a pair of socks out of this this is farmer's daughter fibers um a sock club that i got from a d stash so i think like these would go nicely for a um a scrappy blanket i've seen those like cozy memories comfy memories i'm not sure i've seen those blankets where they are like all your scrap yarn or advent yarn um and you just like make a blanket out of it so i've thought about doing that because i want to make use of these and i could make a lot of socks but i feel like a blanket like everyone in my house could enjoy um and eventually i could pass it down and so i think i might i'm leaning towards socks i also have this blue which would be nice with this um i'm not really a scrappy person like it's not really my style that I lean towards, but for a blanket, I think that that would be really nice. I like that a lot. Um, oh, found some yarn in the wrong spot. I've got some knitting for all of mohair in here. I think this might be like garnet or something. Um, this is the wrong spot. I'm gonna move it. <laughs> Back into my knitting for olive bag. Now just more not matching colors. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just have a lot of random sock yarns in here. This is more lapidary, so I'm going to move this over to be with the other one. Mm, kind of came apart in there. <laughs> um, this is really nice because I can organize my yarn better. I am going to show you guys when I put it all back down into my yarn closet um, what that looks like for me. But I still keep it in the bags because I don't want it to get moths at all. I don't even know if we have moths here, but yeah, I have some white sock yarn um, I just have a lot of like little guys that um, I do hold on to these you just never know and it's not you know if I was pressed for space then maybe I would think about you know giving them away or something but I'm not and so I just keep them because this is a cute color it would I mean it would go with this color scheme fine I don't know what I'm gonna do <laughs> um, this is what I made my favorite hat out of, plus some knitting for olive mohair. It's Malabrigo Machita. Machita? This is my first time using a single ply yarn, and I think my only time. <laughs> I just, um, I don't really know much about it, and I don't know how to use it. So, my hat is like one of my favorite things to wear. So, so I have some more just like a little. Wow, that's tightly wound. <laughs> Before I got a like yarn winder. <laughs> going back tiny little guy oh yeah this oh this I made my Azor sweater out of um, I got the yarn in Lisbon 
um, at Retrosaria Rosa Pomar, her store. And um, I feel like that kind of marked the transition for me into like really being confident in my knitting. It was my first color work sweater. And um, I picked out the yarn for that sweater. I knew what I was gonna do with it. And I just felt really confident afterwards. I made a lot of mistakes and had to do a lot of frogging, but yeah, it was really special. Um, just to think about our time in Lisbon and we were with family, it was just wonderful time. And I wear that sweater a lot. I haven't brought it out yet, actually. I need to. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put all that up. Guys, this is a lot of yarn. <laughs> I feel like I need to take a break. Um, there's still a good amount left. Is this is this the content you were looking for? I'm just not really sure um, if this is like enjoyable. But yeah, if it is, keep watching. I have a good amount more. I'll share something now that's like not in pieces. This. Speaking of Portugal, my parents just got back and they got me this beautiful. Um, skein of Isager, Isager Eco Soft and it's alpaca cotton. Oh, it's so soft. So my mom said, I'm going to go back to the yarn shop you love. What can I get you? And I said, maybe something soft. Just, you know, like I like to see what they pick out. And so she sent me a picture of like the side of this. So I recognized it and I, um, I looked it up and I was like, okay, maybe I'll make myself a hat. And then she pulled out a couple other skeins and I was like, Ooh, maybe I'll make myself a vest, but she got me a sweaters quantity, which was so kind. Um, I have a passion for sort of planning, um, trips. And so I helped them put together their itinerary and found some tours for them and sort of like a day to day. Um, restaurants to eat at, where to get coffee, things like that. So they very kindly um, kind of gave me some yarn to say thank you. So I'm so excited to wear this. I'm thinking just a basic sweater. I want to do like a folded neck band, um, probably stockinette. I can't decide between raglan or drop shoulder. I'm not a big circular yoke person unless it's color work. So I think it would just be nice. This is another one that makes me feel a little academic. Like I should be going back to school and I will be wearing my glasses and have my little double collar folded up and just look nice. So I'm really excited about this. I left the rest of it downstairs um, because it's a lot of, of skeins. And they brought it back all the way in their carry-ons. So nice. Um, thank you, Mom and Papa. Um, yeah, so very excited about that. Um, okay, more yarn, you guys. I got more. Okay, I'm switching gears to this is some yarn that will become gifts. Um, that I just like bought because it was there and eventually I'm going to make it into a gift. Like it could be years from now, but I just got it <laughs> because it was good price or whatever. Um, this is Woolberry I'm Political and Berry Tweed. Um, my plan was to make this for my dad for socks, um, but then I'm making him a sweater for his birthday instead. And so that might be next year or two years from now, but I told myself I'm going to save it for him. <laughs> Um, the green is like his favorite color and then the tweed, I just feel like it looks so nice. Um, yeah, so this is another bag of gift yarn. This right here, Cascade Eco Wool. This yarn, um, I learned about this yarn because my parents brought it back from Montreal and for a skein for me and one for my sister, maybe two, I can't remember. But I made my very first sweater ever out of this yarn. It doesn't really fit that well. <laughs> It wasn't the right yarn for the sweater, but still my very first sweater ever. And so I have a sentimental attachment to it. So I bought this yarn to make my mom a slipover. I was thinking maybe like a simple one stocking it, maybe like um, Stockholm or yeah, something like that. I think, I think I'll do like a crew neck stocking it and I hope she would really like that. So that's what this is. I have the rest of the yarn for my dad's sweater, which I'm actually going to over there. <laughs> that was nice. I don't have to go back down later and get it. Um, I have another one of these for my mom. I actually think that might be way too much, but I got it from Fancy Tiger Crafts when they had like a big um, like summer sale of their winter yarns. And then I also got this um, Summer in Cashmere. It's by BC Garn. It's cotton cashmere blend. Um, I like their yarn a lot because it's the um, got certified, which is really cool. 
I don't really necessarily prioritize um, environmental standards in my yarn buying practices, although I would like to do that more in the future. Um, and so it's nice that this is like accessible and available to, um, and still like a budget friendly price for me. Um, my local yarn shop had a big summer or winter sale for summer yarn, I'm not sure. Um, so I got this and I wanna make a cumulus tea for my mom maybe in a year, two years, I'm not sure. Again, I don't know, I just got it because this is her color. This is her color and it was on sale. So I'm comfortable with just buying it and putting it away for now. Um, again, if you don't have any space, definitely don't do that. I just have space right now. <laughs> so I, back to fingering weight yarns. <laughs> um, I have some yarn that I intended to use for a test knit, but then the test knit got canceled. Um, that's actually happened to me twice, so I don't know if that happens to you, but it was kind of weird. It hasn't happened again after this one, but. Yes, yeah, so this is Quince & Co. Turn. And um, I have a lot. I have one, two, three, I have four of this color. Um, it's very beautiful. Dusk. And then I have two of this pink. I don't know the color on this. I, this was like deep. This has been years. <laughs> um, Syra, maybe? I don't know if they even have this yarn anymore. I have two of the green, um, seaweed. So it's obviously gorgeous colors. It's gorgeous colors. I um, thought about making something else with it, but it's just, I just don't know what to do. It was just such a weird situation with the test that I was in and um, end up having to frog my project. That's why this one is all like this. So I'm just not sure. This is something maybe I'd be open to a D stash, um, but it's just beautiful. So. I mean, it would be nice color work. Um, these are some of my favorite colors, like this green I love to wear. Love this, love this, but I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. I'm not sure. It might be nice for color work. I don't know, but it has its own bag because there's so much of it. <laughs> okay, and this is my summer yarn. Um, there's not that much. But I have this Santa's yarn. Oh, this is actually a good amount. Line. Um, I think it's their linen blend. And I don't have a ton of this, but it might be a nice, um, if I can make a tank top out of it, or um, be nice as a bandana maybe. I'm not sure. I think I'm just like waiting until I like, think of a project. I probably have to buy like two more and that's fine. I don't mind, but just holding on to it, you know, as one does. I have this in the same yarn. So I have like two and a quarter. I made my mica satchel pattern out of this yarn. So um, I like the linen because I read that it was like antimicrobial and for like a kid's satchel, you definitely need something that's going to fight the, um, <laughs> all of the yucky stuff because all kinds of stuff goes in all these lots of acorns rocks dirt leaves snacks so i like that it's you know fighting all of that um i don't even know what this yarn is kcp hand knit yarns it's also got certified which is awesome um organic cotton so i got this like forever ago it's just like a hundred yards I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but um, I got it for Christmas like five years ago, maybe four or five years. Um, and like my mom got it for me. I wasn't really super into knitting at the time, but I was trying to get into it. I think my sister sent it to her and had like a sample bag of all these different yarns. And so I have used most of the other ones, but I haven't used this one. It feels so soft, like it's so soft, but I don't know what to do with a hundred yards of it. So I just look at how pretty it is. Um, maybe there's like a home project I can do. Maybe a scrunchie. I don't know, but it's so soft. Oh my gosh. Okay, any, oh yep, summer yarns. I have this, um, Munga Mungo. 
It's another Retro Zaria Rosa Primar yarn. This is like a recycled cotton wool. I have a um, short sleeve top out of it. And what was it called? Oh, this is basically my entire knitting history right here. <laughs> um, the Monica T. Yes, Monica from Friends. I have a similar personality to Monica in some ways. And so I thought after I saw that, I was like, okay, well, I got to make the Monica tea because some people have said I am similar to Monica in some ways. Um, Monica, it's probably like her closet that she hides from everyone there. She just stuffs everything. That's probably my craft closet. So yeah, we both have closets like that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I made the Monica um, tea out of it and I'm really happy with it. It feels very nice um, and more memories because I think I ordered this from Lisbon. I don't think I actually bought it while we were there um, but I like it a lot. Let's see. Oh this is fun. Very fitting. Christmas yarns. <laughs> um, I have all my Christmas color yarns in here. This is um, Kelborn Woolen's Germantown. I used this last year to do a lot of gift wrapping, so I made some stars and mittens out of this and just put them on um, people's gifts as like a gift tag, that kind of thing. I usually wrap all my gifts in this like butcher paper, because, but it's just like the perfect Christmas green. I'll probably just keep using it for that until I run out. I also have some sock yarn. This is Heritage Sock by Cascade. Um, superwash nylon. I got it at a local yarn shop in um, Mars Hill, North Carolina. And I have a white one and I have a gorgeous green. So one day I aspire to make Christmas socks for my family. It's not going to be this year, but maybe next year. <laughs> but I just think it's a classic sort of Christmas color. Um, and so maybe I will make them next year or I bet there's going to be some new patterns coming out for Christmas stuff. So maybe I will make some this year. <laughs> we'll see. But I just like to use these for like um, gift tags and stuff like that. Ooh, this is extra crinkly. Ooh, this is not good. I don't know what happened to this skein. It like fell apart. I have another one that's like normal. This is Malabrigo um, Rios. This is the color English uh, Rose or English Garden. Uh, my sister and I made my grandmother a shawl out of it and because um, she's always cold and she came and visited and it was cold <laughs> and so anyway she lives somewhere very warm but I think she's still gonna wear it. Um, but yeah, it was fun to knit that together. So I knit the first half and my sister did the last half. Um, our gauges were totally different. So it was a little bit of a math equation. <laughs> we didn't know our gauges were different until after we did the project. So yeah, but my grandma doesn't know. And it, you can't tell by looking at it, so. I have some more fingering weight yarns. Cascade 220 fingering. I have a lot of green. A lot of green and I have one white. So I think the story of my stash is like I buy it for something and then I just find something else to use. So I bought this originally to make my dad a hat, but then I found a heavier weight yarn that I thought he would like better. So I used that instead. So I still have this and I was like, I'll just keep it because... I already bought it and I can't return it, so <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it. But I think this would be a really nice sweater to hold or yarn to hold with something um, to match with like a surrey or a mohair um, and to have like a winter sweater in this forest green. I don't have a lot of things this color and so I think it'd be nice to add that to my wardrobe. Um, I did look at these recently because I was trying to find my sweater's quantity when I was thinking about how to do this video. <laughs> I also am going to share how I catalog my stash. Um, I'll figure out how to do a screen record and then share that with you. But basically, I had originally used the Ravelry stash function, but it was hard to keep up with and just overall not very intuitive for me. I started using um, just a Google Sheets 
and I have like the name of the yarn, brand, the yarn type, how many yards it is, um, how many skeins I have, and then any project ideas that I have. That was super, like to me that's more intuitive. I can also use Drive wherever I have internet and they do the math for me, just like on Ravelry. So I really like it. Um, that's been helpful for me as I think through like actually using my yarn. This year I planned to not buy a lot of yarn for myself, um, just like adding to my stash in a practical way. Like I said, adding Goodwill or Scout because I always use that um, or buying gift yarn. So I have done that pretty well. Um, I have bought some yarn just because it wasn't a hard and fast, like no yarn. <laughs> um, if you're doing that, that's awesome. If you don't do that, that's awesome too. But, um, so I haven't really grown my stash that much this year. Maybe a little bit. Oh, I still have more yarn though. Don't worry, this is just an interlude <laughs> while I share how I store it. And um, yeah, got some more yarn to share. Okay, so this is just a miscellaneous bag of yarn. I'm not planning to keep it um, in this bag. I just hadn't put it away yet. It basically sits next to my desk and I'm trying to scoot back. It sits next to my desk and anytime I finish a project or um, just find something that I, I pull it out and then I don't put it away yet, it goes back in here. Oh, I got some Pearl Soho. This is Pearl Soho Linen Quill. Um, I used it for a um, scarf number one for my sister-in-law. I, I really like their linen quill a lot. Oh, this is linen quill too. My, I must have had the linen quill out for some reason. <laughs> um, yep. I made my lightweight rag and, raglan pullover out of this color. Do I have more? Oh, I do. This is ochre pink. Um, I made my Diana's bandana out of this color. Um, it's like a reversible bandana by Ozetta, I believe. More Pearl Soho. I must have been doing something with this. I have no idea. <laughs> this is my sweet grass that is left over from my second cumulus um, tea that I modified the sleeves on and made them long. So I have this left over. I think a scrunchie or a bow would be cute out of this. Yeah, maybe a scrunchie. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I love working with this yarn. It's alpaca cotton. So nice. So these all need to go in my Pearl Soho bag. <laughs> Okay, what else? Ooh, oh, ooh. Okay, okay, I, I see what more where I was going with this. Um, this is Rosa Pomar, Pomar Bres Brusca, Bresca? I'm not sure. I made my weekender sweater out of this. I have some left. Um, it's It was my first time using wool and spun yarn and I didn't even know it was wool and spun. I was like, why do they keep breaking? <laughs> Uh, the more you know, um, I didn't watch like YouTube, I didn't have a knitting Instagram then, I didn't know anything about it, but anyway, so I have some of this, and, um, might be nice for a hat. <sighs> so much yarn. Um, this is, um, oh gosh, oh, Brooklyn Tweed Peary. I need to put this with my fingering weight yarns. I have one Malabrigo worsted. This is the kind of thing I could de-stash though, because I made a gift knit out of this and I don't have plans for um, this one. So I could, I could gift this or not gift it. I could sell this, I guess. Um, I don't know. I don't see myself using it for something um, unless I made another hat out of it, which is what I made the first time. <laughs> um, ooh, this is pretty. This goes in my sock yarn. I don't know why it's in this bag. What was I doing with this yarn? I don't know. Um, oh, I think I was cataloging it and I didn't remember the name of it. Ah, uh, so this yarn is not in my stash thing. Oh, well, it's okay. <laughs> um, okay, yes, I have this Lefty Tweed, which I got recently. It is for a uh, my husband's friend. This is for me though. That would be a cute hat. I like this. Lucky Tweed by Kelborn Woolen Scout. I talked about that in the last video, I believe, or two videos ago. Um, oh, more Peary. Hmm. 
Okay, I have more than I thought. This is actually a pretty good amount. I could, um, I could do something with this. Oh, or it'd be nice in my little blanket. No, I feel like I could make something out of this. This is a good amount. Oh, I love this yarn. Okay, this is from Stephen and Penelope, which my parents got me in Amsterdam. Also, the story of my stash is my parents gave me a lot of yarn, which is so kind of them to support my hobbies. Um, this was a long time ago when they went to Amsterdam, and it's from Stephen and Penelope, and um, I made a pair of socks out of it, and I made, tried to make a second pair, and I did, ran out of yarn, so I recently frogged them. It was sitting in that one and a half socks for like two years, at least two years. But now it's here, and I can make some more socks out of it, so. I'm very excited to use it. It's a um, nettle yarn. They're, um, it's called Onion Nettle Sock, I believe. And it's super soft and it uses nettle instead of nylon. What else is in here? I have a lot of scraps for my designs. So this is Cascade 220 Superwash. I should probably make a Cascade bag. That's a good idea, Cascade bag. More of that. This I use for my snow globe sweater. Um, I got it at my local yarn shop. So yeah, I have that. Okay, here's one I haven't shared on here before. Um, I was saving it to do with a video with my sister, um, which we still plan to do, but it's just been hard to get together in the season. This is called the Bravo Foxtrot Lima One Flight One Way Flights by Threadbare Dye Works. Um, it's BFL hand dyed in every skein every skein one of a kind trip in every skein so it's got something under the label but I don't know what I haven't opened it yet um, but this is cool because I got it this summer um, my sister and I visit a yarn shop in the town where our parents grew up and there's actually a local dyer there and it's uh, his yarn shop. He works at the yarn shop. I don't think he owns it, but he was manning the cash register when we were there. And he was so helpful and so nice. And I was talking about how I love this color purple. And he's like, oh yeah, actually that's my yarn. And so after that, I was like, I have to buy it because it's so beautiful. And it's his yarn. So it was very cool. Um, the bear has a little eye patch. Um, but yeah, it felt super nice. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It would be a cute hat or um, bandana maybe, or I'll just hold on to it forever <laughs> um, because I have enough yarn to knit projects forever. Maybe next year I won't buy any new yarn. I could probably still like not buy more yarn and knit projects forever. <laughs> um, but anyway, I thought that was a fun story. It's like where my parents grew up, where all our family lives um, that is still around. They live there. We went there every summer growing up. Um, and finally got to take our sons back. It was just a cool like pilgrimage. My husband got to go for the first time, stay out on the farm. And so, yeah, it was a really special time. So I wanna make something special with this, um, but I just don't know yet what. Oh, one more of the knitting for Olive. That's for my husband. <laughs> just gonna toss that over. There's like piles on this side now. I've moved everything from here to here but not everything but it's coming <laughs> i'm probably gonna spend all night putting this away and that's okay so much okay really i really am getting close over here to the end of it um i think this is all the yarn can not find any more around my desk or anything um i have a desk downstairs where i sort of do all my design stuff and keep that um, a lot of my tools and then I have like the, the craft closet where I keep all my um, project books and things like that. I don't know if those count as stash. Should I share that next? My um, All my like making magazine, Moon and Turtle, I have like a lot of taproot. Um, should I share those? That's kind of fun. Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. I It's like a book, book collection, book stash of knitting related things. So that might be fun. So I have one skein of this. This came from my my dear friend that I grew up with. She's one of my best friends and my whole life I have known her. And so she went with her husband um, to Colorado and Utah and she brought me back this yarn, which was so, so thoughtful. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it shows me the little, little guy it came from. 
It's Rommeldale. Um, it's one of the rarest breeds of sheep in the U.S. and is on the Livestock Conservancy's priority list. And this is from Largo, the sheep. So cute, Largo. Thank you for this this yarn. Um, so it feels super soft. I think it has it feels a little bit oily, as I've heard people say. Um, smells sheepy. So yeah, I think this would be good for a hat or a pair of gloves. Like be nice maybe gloves maybe I'll make gloves out of this I don't know but it's also very special because she got it for me and yeah that's just very sweet so I don't know what I'm gonna do but it has its own bag too like it goes in its own bag because it's so special you know just sentimental yarn okay I have a question before I finish up the yarn there's only a little bit left um if you're still watching thank you <laughs> you can leave me a comment and tell me do the people in your life that love you or you love, do they know about your yarn hobby and do they buy you yarn or send you pictures of yarn when they travel? Um, because as I'm going through my stash, I'm noticing that a lot of it has been gifted to me or I purchased it um, when I'm traveling or someone's traveling and they thought of me. So do you have special yarns from people in your life that have sent it to you? Um, that's part of the reason I love just knitting, fiber crafts, is yarn is so like global it like brings us together and there are yarn shops all over the world and you can visit them when you're traveling or visiting family um I just think that's so fun and part of the reason yeah I just love the community knitting all of that okay the final push <laughs> I have this bag this looks like a bunch of scraps of yarn so oh this is a summer yarn so I'm gonna move that this is drops bell um, I made my second um, mica satchel out of this for another like affordable option let's see oh I dyed this um, with avocado pits because it was just so fun <laughs> um, oh yes this some beautiful yarn. I don't think I have the tag with me. It's downstairs in my craft closet. But my dad got this for me and one for my sister when he was in Boston like five or six years ago for work. And he went to a little market and yarn. And similar to the other one I was just telling you about, it's like kind of oily and it's super like soft and feels strong. Like it came right off the sheet. Um, so I'm excited to use that. One day <laughs> I will. Um, I have all these little tiny scraps, these little guys, from my Moonweight cowl. I bought a kit for that. Ah, so many little tiny, tiny yarns. They're so cute. Tiny yarn. So I bought a kit for that um, from Camila Bad, I think is her name. And I'm like telling myself I'm going to make something with these tiny little guys. There's one more in here somewhere. Where are you? Is this it? No. Oh, here it is. I keep telling myself I'm gonna make something with these, but honestly, I don't know what. <laughs> like, there's not that much. I should weigh it and see. Maybe it would be cute color work um, gloves. I could use another base color. That would be good. Um, so yeah, I have just like, I have a lot of stuff like this. I have these. I made my husband a hat out of this yarn. And this is kind of my bag of this size. <laughs> I know I probably don't need to keep this, but I made the Grace Pullover out of it by Byron Handmade. And I love just the meaning behind the name of that sweater. And so, yeah, I'm kind of like, I gotta keep it, right? Um, oh, this looks like Scout. I'm gonna put this in my Scout bag. I made my dad, the first hat I ever made him was out of Scout, and it was this one. So, yeah, one of his favorite colors is green, so most of my green yarn is, like, from him. I just have, like, a lot of, just like this. Um, do you guys keep, like, ones that are this small, or do you donate them, toss them? I don't know what you do with them. Um, I think this is Brooklyn Tweed Arbor. Yeah, this is um, a Noro yarn. 
So yeah, just a lot of like, ooh, that's soft. What is this? So what did I make out of this? Hmm. I don't know, but man, I need another one. <laughs> oh, it's um, Barocco Vintage, I think. Um, I made the turtle dove sweater by Espes, Espes Trico. Yep, that's what I made. I made my brother-in-law a hat. Yeah, so I just keep a lot of these. I don't know if I should. I'm just holding on. But if I buy, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should just do something with them. This is a pretty good amount. This is the alpaca wool by Santa Scarn. I should start another bag of Santa Scarn. Yeah. You guys are really helping me out. I can, uh, now I'm going to reorganize all my yarn. Okay. Oh, you guys, I found the purple mohair. Look. Okay. So this is some yarn I ordered to do my back to school socks out of. And since they're kid socks, they didn't take very much yarn, but now I have a bunch of fingering weight sock yarn. It's from Knit Picks, Knit Picks Stroll. I have a lot of fun colors. Um, and so I think I might make a striped sweater for my son. That would be cute. Not like patchworky, or maybe patchworky. It might be next fall though, because my design timeline is really slow, which is okay. But yeah, I have a lot. So I think I might do a fingering weight sweater. Maybe a striped cardigan. That'd be cute, right? <laughs> this is the purple mohair I was talking about. I knew it was in there. Okay, my last two bags, guys. My last two bags. This is my longest video by far. Um, I have this. This is from um, my Nina's Slipover. It's from the Hip, it's hip Wool from the Hip Knit Shop. And um, I made a striped slipover. It's one of my most complimented pieces, actually. But I have a bunch of yarn left over from that. And... I'm not like a super into stripes person, so I don't think I need to make a sweater out of it, but that would be really cute because I still am in love with these colors and I have a pretty good amount of yarn left. Um, I need to weigh it. It could also be, I could make a whole nother slipover, like a gift slipover. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I really loved working with this yarn and um, they have so many good colors on their site. So that was awesome. And yeah, like I said, people like seem to love that one. I don't wear it like a ton, um, but every time I wear it, it's like, oh my gosh, I love your slipover. I love your vest. So yes. And then this is pretty like not exciting to end on, but it's my Cascade 220 scraps from my previous project. So I made my son a dinosaur, use this color. Um, made a gift sweater out of this. Oh, the unicorn, which is now finished, I made out of this. Um, so that's my 220 scraps. Yeah, wow, that was a lot. I'm gonna put some footage now of me um, looking through my yarn stash and um, putting it away in my yarn closet. I'm gonna reorganize it a little bit. Again, I don't have an aesthetic setup. It's not really practical for me. Um, to just have it all out displayed. I know my son would love to get into it and admire it. Um, and I'm sure the moths would as well. I don't know if we even have moths, but like that is a concern in this area. And so even though our house is like not that old, I do get worried about it. Um, hence why all my yarn is pretty much in bags. <laughs> Probably have to bring a light down there so you guys can see it. Um, but again, it's like, it's not a beautiful setup, but it's just what works for me. Um, if you'd like, I hope this inspires you to spend some time with your stash and look through, get all of the happy memories or the sad memories, the tears out. Um, I know for a lot of people, yarn and knitting, fiber arts is, um, connected to their family or maybe an ancestor who previously knitted. It's part of their culture. And so it's not really like a standalone hobby. There's a lot of feelings that go into it. So get yourself a coffee or something yummy and go sit with your stash and feel all your feelings and make something new out of it. This has inspired me to make some stuff. I forgot how much I love these tiny little scraps. So I don't know what I'm gonna make, but yes, thank you so much for watching. If you're still here and you haven't subscribed, now's the time to leave me a comment and like this video if you can so other people can see it. Um, 
Yeah, I really, again, I shared in my previous video that I did not expect this to be such a positive experience joining the YouTube knitting community and I have loved just being part of it, getting to share my patterns um, in the form of my designs, but also just my, my knitting and my everyday life. So thank you guys so much. Happy knitting. I will see you soon.